Um, and then a week later, they're like, yeah, we're going to have a like, okay, whatever, I can add it. Fine. Show up a couple times. <laughs> Fair. And I'm like, oh, and then also, but like, like a week after that, we're going to do the third one. And I was like, what? what do you mean? There's more. But I'm dead. I'm like, really dead at that point. Like, what, what, am I, what do I have to do with it? And um, I said, no, it's fine. We're back in time. I said, okay. Why are we back in time? They're like, don't worry. We have this wicked sweet location for Edmonton in <laughs> but you guys have like capes on and lots of smoke, it looked really cool. Um, and it did, it looked really cool and we had a great time and Fort Edmonton was an amazing location. And I was like living on White House right in front of my Why not so nice though? Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. There's a lot of cool shops on there. There was a gravity pope, I might have just mentioned. <laughs> my bought some shoes there one point, yeah. So they shot the, the two sequels back to back? Yeah, we only had a few um, What? What happened? Like got a the money, the money. We didn't even really have as much of a script for the third one. Mm -hmm. um, they're like, we got a location. I'm like, but what are we doing? Shh, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it was. <laughs> they could all pull together, and it's and it's pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Um, I want to open it up uh, to you guys. Um, you don't have to do it very formally. Yeah, just raise your hand. Uh, so you and Emily Perkins were performing together as sisters. What's that like working together? I love Emily. Emily and I actually go way back. We were born in the same hospital. We were in the same preschool, the same elementary school, um, the same junior high-ish type school. Same all-girls private boarding Catholic school. Anyway, um, and uh, I made the same agency. And we, yeah, we, I kind of followed her around for the whole play. And um, when we did the first junior shops, we, we auditioned for it. We thought it was cool, and everyone else thought we were completely insane. But Emily and I are a bit, we're a bit dark, and this is, you know, after the day, we're like, yeah, no, this is great. I mean, no one will ever probably watch it. We'll never work again, but it'll be really cool. And uh, we did our first sort of tapings auditions together. And then when we got the callbacks to go in to meet the director, um, I saw her in the lobby, and she shaved her fucking head. I was like, Emily, what are you doing? She's like, oh, you know, I just, I was like, oh, you ruined this for us. And so that's why she wears that awful wig the whole time on the first one, is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then when we did another Cinderella story, which is like this fun, goofy, you know, movie with Selena Gomez, I was like, wouldn't it be funny if we could play sisters, but like totally the opposite of, you know, still bitches, but you know, the opposite of what we were before. And thankfully, that all worked out. Nice. But, yeah. Yes. I actually have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, my friend is looking right now, and she can't make it here. Um, she wants to say hi, by the way. Hi. Hi, friend. <laughs> Um, Ginger, to me, was a really interesting character. Like, I hadn't seen that kind of character in film before, as a young character. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why does Trevor know what they really do? Okay. Um, I, uh, yeah, I really, I hadn't really seen that character in film before. And as a young girl who goes through all of this, changes in life, I, it was intriguing to me to see that reflected back. And, you know, I'm not always the sweet, innocent girl next door type. And I like to be a little bit crazy. And my problem was that I didn't really read how much effort and work and hours of prosthetics that, that would take. I just kind of read it like I, was, I would see it in a movie and then I sat there in the chair for seven hours. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I think that character is really stood the test of time with people um, of all ages all over the world, it really affected people um, on a level, and, you know, I, I think we've all felt like that, so, but we've all felt like we were a bit marginalized and, uh, and ignored, and, uh, you know, everyone wants to be a little crazy, you know, to allow. <laughs> I, I also want to know, um, out of all the things I've tried to get into the chat, which of the deaths was your favorite? Yeah, no, I'm more of a story. We had a, there, was a, there was a little kid, like a three-year-old, that was in the house, living in the house that we were shooting at him. And it was like this big, like, you know, effort to sort of coordinate him not seeing what was going on. Because we would be like, okay, now we'll murder up here and we'll do this over here. And 
everywhere we're walking, we're like, whoa, no, they scooped the kid up and oh, no. whisked him off before he saw us like hanging and, you know, burned off a lot. Oh, yeah. That was fun. How did you American Mary? American Mary um, was, uh, was sent to me the script by uh, the twins. And I'm, they were like, oh, you know, the first time director of my movie, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I ended up reading the whole 180 pages of my book, right, in bed. Because I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just skim it. And then I was like, what the hell? And I just kept reading it. I, I thought it was amazing. Um, and then I sent it to my dad, who's been in film cover, and said, okay, I think this is cool, but I might be, like, I might be <laughs> And he goes, no, this is actually really cool. The question is, are they ever going to be able to get it done? And, um, I had sushi with the twins about a week later at like, you know, regular dinner time when we had the doctor coach to the four in the morning. And then the karaoke place reopened so that we could sing karaoke. <laughs> we became instantly the best of friends, and yeah, ever since. <laughs> How did you prepare for it, though? How did I prepare for it? Well, yeah, we had about nine months in between when I first got the script and when we went to shoot it. And I wasn't getting my hopes up too much that we were actually going to be able to make this. Um, and so I, I, I would sort of go back at it and I would read it every once in a while and I, I think it just sort of absorbed in my brain a little bit. I didn't do too much, um, you know, over analyzing. It's so well written, the girls did such a good job reading it. It's really just there. Like I didn't have to be like, oh God, I have to rework this whole thing and make it like believable or watchable or, you know, make this character uh, relatable. It was already there, and the girls were so supportive, and the crew was so enthusiastic about helping us. It all just came together magically in 15 days of shooting. Yeah. Sir, with Robert England at the extra, I had a chance to see the director of the scene that I do in front of his Jason with him, where he chases me around the boiler room, and then I stop doing the last bit. I didn't see him all night on the downtown east side on East Hastings of Vancouver, which is notorious, I'm sure you all know, um, as a, you know, crack addicted prostitute. Um, until 7 in the morning, we were doing this night show, this really low budget kind of thing. And my call time for Freddie was, uh, was 9. And uh, so I immediately went just on to the next set, like, complete zombie. Um, in the world's worst abandoned mental institution that is no longer existing, and we built condos on top of it, people can't move up fast enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I walk into my trailer, and there's a, a big giant bouquet of flowers. I'm like, oh god, who's, who's here? Which ex boyfriend is stalking me? <laughs> <laughs> and there's, a, there's an 8x10 black and white headshot of Freddy Krueger with his eyes. It goes for Katie, my favorite victim, love and death, Freddy. And I was like, Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, because Freddie kills you when you're sleep deprived and sleepy, I was just I was just losing my mind all day. Chasing me around and yeah, it was amazing. And he's just an absolute peach to work with. And um, I've seen him uh, I haven't really had a chance to talk to him here, but I saw him uh, a few months back and he um, yelled at us about musical theater. <laughs> so he really likes musical theater, you know. <laughs> Uh, yes. Um, I saw you in Red Max Romance last year. Cool. I used to make men in the festival and I really enjoyed it. I heard it had a like, fun onset story. Mm -hmm. Red Max of Romance was... That got delayed by about five years. We all went into the table where we tried to get Telefilm to give us some money. And I guess Telefilm hated us. And so <laughs> it was like so four years later and they were like, Oh, now we're actually going to try to get us a play. Really? And I am... Um, from BC, not by just coincidence, very good at rolling joints. <laughs> and so they were very, very, they were very thrilled with my joint I asked that question. That's right, yeah. yeah. So that was my, they're like, well, do you want us to pre-roll? I was like, no, no, I got this one. <laughs>